Tough love? But we just had a Calvin and Haley focused episode. We can't have another one of those so soon when we have other Rangers to focus on, unless this title means that we're going to get another couple from the team, which could be great if it's handled with as much care as Calvin and Haley's relationship. On top of that, if this episode is as enjoyable as the last one, that would complete the season's strong start. I'm not expecting this episode to top episode 2, but I am hoping for something better than the third episode in Ninja Steel. So let's see if this episode can solidify Super Ninja Steel standing as better than last season as we look at episode 3. Tough Love. The episode opens with Madame Odious putting the finishing touches on a piece of sheet music, which is actually a magic spell that can turn whoever sings it evil. She then charges a monster called Spyclops to the task of getting a ranger to sing the song so she can use the evil ranger to get the power stars. In the city, a girl named Jess is performing music when she's met by Victor, who starts hitting on her. Jess says the jock really isn't her type, and after Victor tries to woo her with different costumes, he vows to find her type before walking off. As Jess starts to play again, the rangers walk by, with Lee Vaden noticing the girl is singing one of his songs, and decides to join her in a duet. Jess is over the moon that she got to meet the famous singer, commenting that he smells good, which gives Victor the idea that Jess likes the cowboy type, even though Lee Vaden's a musician, but regardless, the scene's broken up by attacking Basherbots. Lee Vaden gets Jess to safety, while the other rangers morph into action, and we get to see Jess's shovel skills when the two run into trouble. Lee Vaden proceeds to ask the girl out, with Jess saying she can show the singer her new song, before Lee Vaden rejoins the rangers, who don't look too happy that the gold ranger left them high and dry. Unfortunately, we don't get to see that conversation, as Jess reveals herself to be Spyclops in disguise, Guys, and then cut to Victor and Monty making cowboy cologne. Really hope they would step away from smell-based humor, but I guess it's a real hit with the kids. Later, Lee Vaden and Jess have their date, which starts off well, that is until the girl tries to change Lee Vaden's outfit, saying that change is the spice of life. Though he resists at first, Lee Vaden does come around to his date's way of thinking, and agrees to play Jess's song, even though it's not country. Cut to the other rangers, who are in shop class training, and after the team finishes the workout, Calvin questions where Lee Vaden is, since he's half an hour late. The gold ranger then arrives on the scene, surprising everyone with his new look. Hi, Levi. Did y'all get my text about singing with Jess? Yeah, we did. So you two are gonna play together? Yep. Jess has a new song. I'm gonna sing it with her later at the park. That's great. But, um, I have to ask, what's up with the clothes? Oh, yeah. Jess helped me pick out a totally new look. Nice, huh? <laughs> Is that really you? Excuse me? Yeah, and this music? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are we not gonna go back to the obvious tension between Brody and Lee Vaden? No? Everyone's gotta get involved? Okay. Preston says the lyrics for the song are just gibberish, with Calvin asking if Lee Vaden's doing all this to impress Jess, and after seeing that the others agree, the Gold Ranger storms off in a huff. Preston says he recognized the lyrics before we cut to Lee Vaden playing Jess's song, and despite Lee Vaden commenting that people don't like it, the girl urges him to finish the piece of music. We then cut back to the other Rangers, with Red Rod giving Preston a spell book that Mick brought from the Lion Galaxy, and I just realized that Kelson Henderson's nowhere to be found in this episode. After scanning the spell book, Preston discovers the lyrics are from a spell to turn Lee Vaden evil, which means that Jess is working for Madame Odious, so the rangers run off to stop the golden boy from playing the song. They're a bit late though, as Lee Vaden soon finishes the song, complete with a phrase that's totally not Japanese, but before Jess can celebrate, Victor shows up trying to woo the girl again with awful smelling cowboy cologne. Jess quickly repels the jock by turning into her monster form, and after everyone runs off, Spyclops gloats over her success, just as the other rangers run into the monster. Lee Vaden demands the team's power stars, showing the others that he's now evil, so Haley asks Preston if he can reverse the spell, but the blue ranger says he needs the sheet music so he can save the spell backwards. Unfortunately, because the rangers were dumb enough to say this out loud, Lee Vaden rips up the sheet music and morphs to take on the team. The others follow suit, tasking Calvin to collect the pieces of sheet music while they try to neutralize the gold ranger. During the fight, Sarah knocks Spyclops back, just as Calvin reveals that he has all the sheet music, and after blasting Lee Vaden, the two get it to Preston, just as the gold ranger gets ready to attack again. I just need to read it backwards to break the spell. Ijnik, Opnin, Omils, I'll destroy you all! Mama, ma, milk, hold up, hold, pill, hold up, hold up, Whoa. What happened? Was I attacking you guys? Yeah, your girlfriend's a monster and she made you evil. Jess is a monster? I can't believe it. I hope I didn't hurt anyone. We're fine. Welcome back, big brother. That's all we're gonna get from Brody and Lee Vaden, huh? All six rangers then catch up with a retreating Spyclops, and after engaging the monster, Brody and Lee Vaden work together to literally take her down. Cosmo Royale causes Spyclops to grow, so the rangers call on the Bull Rider and Ninja Steel Megazords, and once they knock the monster out of the sky, the team forms the Fusion Megazord to finish Spyclops for good. After the fight, Lee Vaden apologizes to the others for not believing them about Jess, with Brody saying they like Lee Vaden the way he is, and the episode ends with Victor coming in still reeking of cowboy cologne while everyone uses clothespins to avoid the smell. This episode is 
is okay. At first glance, this is a decent filler episode with an alright moral, but I can't shake the feeling that this is yet another Lee Vaden focused episode that would have been better if it was slightly rewritten. Like if the point of the episode wasn't just on the message of being true to yourself, but was instead about the dynamic between Brody and Lee Vaden, this could have been more of a character building experience than just a filler episode. At first, I thought that's what we were gonna get when Brody asked if Lee Vaden's new outfit was really him, but the conversations immediately cut off by the inclusion of everyone else. What should have happened is that Lee Vaden should have butted heads with Brody since the Red Ranger's been gone for 10 years, and you could even have Lee Vaden deal with an identity crisis now that he has his family back after being Levi Weston for so long. That would have made him more willing to change for Jess since he now has questions of who he really is, and by the end he could realize that Levi Weston is a part of his identity. Having him interact with Brody would also allow the two to build an actual relationship with each other rather than them just saying the word brother every now and then. And if the argument is there isn't enough space in the episode for those scenes, then you can just cut the Victor and Monty stuff. Their first scene was absolutely perfect with the jock getting turned down in favor of a famous musician, so we really didn't need the subplot of him trying to make cologne so he can get a date. Even if you weren't going to make this episode about Lee Vaden and Brody, cutting these scenes would have still been a good idea, since it would have made Lee Vaden and Jess's transition into a couple feel less rushed. Overall, this episode is more disappointing than it is anything else. After all, the last episode gave us strong character dynamics while also building on Calvin and Haley's relationship, and that made the message in that episode that much stronger. In this episode, we could have had something similar, if not better, had they actually gone the extra mile, but because we just get a surface level message that's delivered okay, the whole episode comes off as bland. That said, this is definitely not the worst thing to come out in Ninja Steel, despite it being the worst episode of the season so far, and while I certainly say you can skip this one, it's still a decent watch if you happen to catch it on TV. I'm Nick, aka IronBat1993, and may the power protect you! Please subscribe for reviews of Ninja Steel, Super Ninja Steel. Also, check out Diamond Charge Reviews 2, Episode Reviews. Also, there's Ninja Go, and I've got a Patreon Go. Please subscribe.